Hi, my name is Chris Scott and I head up the nanomedicine research team here at Queen's University. We're interested in coming up with new ways to treat disease, ultimately trying to develop new drugs. Working with colleagues both here at Queen's and across the globe, we're interested in tackling areas of unmet clinical need, where perhaps there are no drugs at the moment, or the current drugs that are there are frankly not good enough. An example of a condition that we're interested in is sepsis. Sepsis starts from an infection and it rapidly progresses to a massive inflammatory response from the body that can result in organ failure or ultimately death of the patient. One organ that is particularly susceptible in sepsis patient is the lung, where there is a massive influx of inflammatory cells into the tissue which causes fluid to collect and blocks patient's breathing. This is a condition that's known as Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome, or ARDS. ARDS can also be caused by trauma to the chest and develop in patients in intensive care units that are under mechanical ventilation. In the United Kingdom alone, recent estimates have suggested that 37,000 patients per year die from sepsis, and that another 15 to 20,000 patients can succumb to ARDS. Now let's put that into perspective. That's as big, if not bigger, mortality rates than some of the leading cancers. And currently, there are no effective treatments for either of these conditions. What we have done here in our lab at Belfast is that we've developed a new nanoparticle, which we have named SAN101. This nanoparticle homes into and binds to cyclic receptors found on the surface of macrophage. And as it does so, it blocks inflammatory signaling. Now this actually represents a novel form of anti-inflammatory agent with quite distinct mechanism of action over steroids or other non-steroids that are currently used in the clinic. We have shown in preclinical models of both sepsis and ARDS that the drug can block this tidal wave of inflammation and reduce the symptoms and therefore the progression of the conditions. Our goal now is to bring this molecule to clinical trials and see if it can successfully treat patients with sepsis or ARDS. It's possible that with the right funding, we could envisage this molecule moving into the clinical trials within the next two to three years. We not only want to improve the terrible mortality rates associated with these conditions, but we also want to reduce the permanent damage and scarring of tissues in the survivors, giving them a better quality of life after they come out of critical care.